Alex. Welcome to Be Brilliant. Do you like making things? Maybe you've wondered how technology works or how kids like us can help the environment. Together with my fellow makers, we'll ask good questions, make our technology, and help find solutions that can change our world. Makers. Good morning, Alex. BB, what's with all that tapping? Did you know that manufacturing in factories started in Britain in the 1800s? It was known as the Industrial Revolution. That's right, BB. That's when factories started producing large quantities of products. But what's with the tapping? Workers had to get up early, so they hired people called knocker uppers to use a long stick with a knob at the end to tap on their upstairs window to wake them up for work. Wow, that's really interesting, BB. Hey BB, today's code phrase is sustainable manufacturing. That's correct, Alex. Here's a question for Mr. Lingley from Summerside, Prince Edward Island. Xander asks, how can we make products that can help our planet and people? Xander, that is a great question. As Bibi mentioned, workers centuries ago, not only did they not have alarm clocks, their workplace conditions really weren't that great. Now, we are trying to make sure that not only are the products that they make great for the environment, that they are leading to healthier communities and we need to make sure that all workers and entrepreneurs have a great working wage. Today on Be Brilliant, Alex is going to visit a local entrepreneur that upcycles plastic bags. We are going to code a mask that lights up and we are going to learn how to make pop-up cards to raise money for our local communities. That's all today on Be Brilliant. Over to you, Alex. Thanks, Mr. Lingley. To help make our world a better place, the United Nations have created 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Today, we'll focus on goal number 12, Sustainable and Responsible Production. This means we want to think about how to do better and more with less, increasing resource efficiency, promoting sustainable lifestyles, and creating jobs with good wages, and even giving back to our community. Let's go to Bathurst to learn about Cards for a Cause. Hi, I'm Elena, and not too long ago, schools in my community made greeting cards to help raise money for local charities. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your own greeting cards using recycled paper. Let's get started! You can make any type of greeting card you like. Thinking of you, Mother's Day, Father's Day, I'm going to start with Happy Birthday. Today, we're going to be creating pop-up cards like this one. What we're going to need today is a six card stock, some colorful paper, some tape, some scissors, and some decorations for your card. We're going to start with the cake toppers because they will help us decide how we're going to design our cake. You can do flowers, candles, anything you'd like. I'm going to keep it simple using candle. Now I'm going to make the flame for my candles. Now you glue your flames onto the candles. Let's put these aside and now we're going to prepare our card. Take a piece of cardstock and fold it in half. You can make it any size you'd like. Now we're going to start making the cake tiers. I'm going to measure the paper to make sure it aligns with the top of the card and fits my candles. Now I'm going to cut my paper to size. Now fold your colored paper in half and you're going to make three cuts along the side of the paper. Make sure you cut it on the folded side. You're going to make four cuts, two long, one medium, and one small cut. Now you're going to fold your tiers along both sides, sort of like this. Then flip it over and do the same thing. Now you're going to open your paper and reverse the crease. We're going to glue our paper onto our cardstock. You can use a glue stick or glue tape. We're going to glue one side at a time, press down to secure. 
Now we have our basic pop-up cake. Let's decorate it. Like that. Make sure it stays on. That looks so cool. Now that you know how to make a pop-up card, you can design more for different holidays and celebrations. Once we have about four or five cards created, bundle them up like this. By bundling, you can sell your cards to raise money for a charity or event that is important to you. Thanks for making with me today. Bye! Thanks, Elena. Hey, Alex. What goes up but never comes down? I don't know, BB. What? Your birthday. Happy birthday, Alex. Alex, we hope you have a brilliant birthday. And guess what? Bibi brought you a cake. Thanks, Mr. Lingling, Ling, and thanks, Bibi. Hey, Bibi, take a selfie. Now, when I was a year younger, I visited an entrepreneur upcycling single use plastics. Check it out! We're here with Renee Outhouse, entrepreneur and maker. Renee, what's, what is Buyer's Boutique and how can a plastic bag be upcycled to help people? Hi Alex, thanks for coming in. Uh, welcome to the store. So Buyer's Boutique is a skincare store and my workshop. As you said, I'm an entrepreneur, so I actually use the space to create the skincare and sell it for my customers. And today, I'm gonna show you how to take a plastic shopping bag, prepare it, turn it into plarn, and then crochet a mat for the homeless. So, uh, welcome into the workshop. This is where I spend some time when prepping the bags and getting things ready and crocheting them when I have a little bit of free time. So, let's get started. You see this? This will come from this, believe it or not. So, what I do is I take the bag, I just give it a little fluff, and I actually fold it the way it would have been when it was new. I fold it. And then I fold it again. And then I take the scissors and cut the bottom piece off. And then I start cutting into strips from where it's folded. The thinner the bag, the bigger the strip I go. And now I've got all these tiny strips. So you got it, you pull it apart. Okay, now you got two. I put one through and then just give a little pull, not too hard. And you've got your start of your strand. This is called plarn, plastic yarn. So once I have my plarn, I will roll it up in a ball. From there, I start the mat. Here we are. So this is one I'm working on right now. This is number five. So I take my loop, and then I try to fit the ball all the way through, and now I can keep going. I got it started for you, just because getting it started sometimes can be tricky. So what I want you to do is put your hook in through. So then I wrap it, and then I pull it through. Just a little bit, right? Just enough to have a little hook, and then I do it again and you just keep doing that. Now it won't look like much when it starts out, so if you're looking at this, how does this turn into a mat? But I promise you it does. So you can see, I started off with the hard plastic, and then I've created each layer, and then I actually go right into the start of the mat. The end project, the, the end result that I want from the mat, if you wanna grab that one right there, let's roll it out, let's take a look is I want it to be three feet wide, approximately, by six feet long, so that it fits most people, and if they need to fold it up, then they can even have like a little pillow. That's the mat. Well, thank you for showing us how to upcycle these oh, plastic bags and how they can help you. our community. Absolutely, thank you for coming in and uh, just hearing me out on how I do this, and I hope that more people will want to do this in their communities. I see you're wearing a mask, Bibi. We're bubbled in here, but we wear a mask when we go outside to keep everyone healthy and safe. Did you know you can make a mask more fun and interactive? Let's visit Corbett and Charlottetown to find out how. Okay, so I coded this uh, circuit playground express to express uh, myself while wearing a mask. So I can express myself without using facial expressions simply by tapping a certain area. So first, I'm plugging in the batteries to the battery pack, and then I'm going to plug in the battery pack to Circuit Playground Express. We're going to go to 
Microsoft.com slash NUS slash make code and click Circuit Playground Express. And then click New, uh, new Project. Next, I'm going to go into the light section, choose Show Animation, and put it into the Forever block. Color Wipe, and, and then the Virtual Circuit Playground will do this. I'm going to click Pause and choose Download. Download and go to Circuit Playground Untitled UFT. And the circuit playground is going to go in the same pattern as the virtual one by dragging it the same way you might use a micro bit. So if button A is pressed, then while button B isn't pressed, then it'll do the rainbow animation. And then one but once button B is pressed, while button A isn't pressed, then I'll show color wipe animation. So now that I've programmed it, I'm going to put it on a mask and then put it directly into the same mask. So now I can program it a rainbow or I can program it uh, many other animations I'd, I, that are built in. If I'm, if I'm cheerful, I could choose a rainbow and if I'm concentrating, I could choose a green. So I can use these colors to express myself through my mask. Wow, I learned so much this episode. I hope you did too. Goodbye, Mr. Lingley. Bye, Alex. Now, well, BB, I hope you learn something soon. Make sure to check out brilliantlabs.ca for all of today's activities and how-to guides. And don't forget to submit your questions to BB. You never know, your question could be featured on an upcoming Be Brilliant show.